The construction industry globally roughly makes up 22% of the total embodied carbon each year, and the main structural elements take up 55% due to construction related activities. So as structural engineers, we can mitigate a lot of embodied carbon through making smart decisions and educating our clients. And the majority of the embodied carbon is coming from the concrete. So let's learn a little bit about it. My name's Brennan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. A study published in Nature's Communication found that steel and concrete roughly make up two two thirds of the total emissions due to construction activities. And concrete makes up the lion's share, which equates to roughly 8% of total global emissions. Some may naysay and say, why don't we use alternatives such as timber? Yes, timber is great at reducing embodied carbon and can even be a carbon store, but it's not appropriate for every situation. Due to the versatility of building high rise buildings and its ability to form any shape, Concrete is still going to be a major part of any construction activity moving forward. So why is concrete so carbon heavy? So let's look what it's made up of. It's made up of aggregate, water, and cement. Aggregate makes up the lion's share of a concrete mix of around 65% or more. Cement roughly makes up about 20%. However, despite only being 20%, it's the main reason why concrete is so carbon heavy. Cement is one of the primary ingredients. It's really the bonding agent to make it into a solid material. So what it's made up of, it's made of 95% clinker and about 5% gypsum to allow for that setting time adjustment. It's the production of clinker that makes it so carbon heavy. You see, clinker is made up of calcium oxide and some clay. And to produce calcium oxide, it needs to break down limestone. To break down that limestone, you need to put everything in a furnace and heat it roughly up to 1500 degrees, at which point a chemical reaction is undertaken in the limestone, splitting apart the calcium oxide and into carbon dioxide. So there's two reasons of carbon emissions in the production of cement. Not only is it to heat up that furnace up to the 1500 degrees, but also the chemical reaction and splitting that carbon dioxide out. So it's like a double whammy here. And this is why there's so much carbon dioxide emissions in the production of cement. To reduce the embodied carbon and increase the cement ratio, don't forget to crush down on that like button. Not only does it help me out, but also gets this out to more people. So if we're looking at the production of cement, on average to produce one kilogram of cement, you roughly emit half a kilogram of carbon dioxide. So it has a really heavy footprint and why it drags up the carbon footprint of concrete. So how can we reduce the amount of cement required in our mix to reduce that carbon footprint? At the moment, there isn't a direct substitute. So you still need some cement in every mix to finalize your design. However, you can reduce the amount of cement you're required through supplementary materials, such as fly ash, which can go up to 20%, and it's a byproduct of burning coal. Or slag, which is a byproduct of steel, can go up to roughly 35% with really minimal or no adverse effects to your concrete mix. So depending on which way you go, you can either replace some of the fly ash or that slag and still get a similar result. However, with the push to reduce emissions, it's more likely that these byproducts are gonna become more and more rare over time and harder to get. So we need other ways to reduce the embodied carbon in our mix. One way to significantly reduce the embodied carbon in your concrete is to rethink that traditional mix of aggregate, water, and cement. And this is a new player to the block created by Solidia Technologies, who's really transformed the way that you can create concrete. What they've done is they've transformed the traditional formula. First up, they've significantly reduced the heat that you require to create cement. So you only need to heat it up to 1200 degrees as opposed to the 1500. This roughly has a 30% reduction in the amount of greenhouse emissions to heat up and create that cement. And secondly, instead of mixing it with water to create that aggregate, they put it in a gas chamber and infuse it with carbon dioxide. Not only does it have a greater reduction in the amount of carbon dioxide required to produce the cement, but also goes from zero strength to full strength in under a day. Of course, there is some limitations as you need to put it into a gas chamber and infuse it with carbon dioxide to make it react means that it's only really applicable for such things such as blocks or precast concrete. But there's still a significant reduction in the embodied carbon for these elements, and this suggests that you can achieve up to roughly a 70% reduction in the embodied carbon in your concrete. The other added benefit of having that low water to no water ratio in your mix is that fact that it's reduced the amount of water, which can be a finite element in different parts of the world. So it has a double benefit here, not only reducing carbon dioxide, but also reducing the required amount of water to produce the concrete. So the mix of Solidia concrete, instead of being aggregate cement and water, is now aggregate cement and carbon dioxide. So when you add up all the embodied carbon, including the amount of carbon that it absorbs to cure it, 
there's roughly a 70% in reduction in the embodied carbon in your concrete mix. If we need to pour concrete in a more traditional method, there's actually products out there that are available today to help reduce that embodied carbon. And this is known as Portland Limestone Cement or PLC. So what it does, it changes that mix of cement ratio by replacing some of the cement with finely ground limestone. So if you're replacing 10% of the cement with 10% limestone, you're reducing the carbon footprint of the cement by 10%. So it has a significant reduction. But wait a second, weren't we just talking about earlier that cement is made out of limestone, but you need to cook it into clinker? Well, yes, but that is the produced form. So that's the cook form where this is just grind limestone. It hasn't gone through the kiln, which is where the, all the embodied carbon comes from. As this product is available today, there's quite a lot of studies into PLCs and how it performs in your mix. A study produced in 2008 found that roughly 3% additional limestone in your mix increased the concrete strength by roughly 10% where if you went as high as 20%, it would have a roughly 9-10% to reduction. However, there was a sweet spot in the middle there. Out of around 12% additional limestone, had no change in strength. So essentially, you could replace 12% of your cement, have a 12% reduction in body carbon, and have no change in the properties of the concrete. So this was a significant breakthrough about the production of PLCs. Additional studies were also undertaken on PLCs about how it performed over time. So does it have the same strength gain as it ages? It found that there was no real change to the amount of strength gain to the concrete. Pretty much produced the same amount. The other major property of concrete is how much it shrinks. Shrinkage is really the bane of any structural engineer. As if you've got a restrained slab, it increases the stresses in your concrete, thus requiring you to either put post-tension or additional reinforcement in your design. And so if you reduce bonding carbon from the mix, but require more post-tensioning or reinforcement in your design to resist those stresses, they may balance each other out. However, a study in 2008 actually found that there was a significant reduction in the shrinkage at that 12% ratio. So we look at the graph here, we've got the red line that comes down. That's with no additional limestone in the mix. And you can see it has the greatest shrinkage where 5% additional limestone is slightly better. However, at that 10% line, we can see at 96 days, there's roughly a 20% reduction in shrinkage. And so it actually performs better if it wasn't mixed with that limestone, meaning that it's a better mix. So if we produce the cement with the PLCs, have some additional savings from adding limestone or slag, we can have up to a 50% reduction in the embodied carbon in our concrete. So that's a 4% reduction in total greenhouse emissions if it's used to its limits. This is actually being used right across the US and around the world to help reduce the embodied carbon on many big projects. So PLC sounds really great. So why hasn't it been used more widely? There are some drawbacks and you've got to be really careful about how you mix it up and produce it. For over the last 10 years, they really perfected the manufacturing of PLCs, so it's no longer really an issue. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description, much like these many Patreons over here. Without their support, these type of episodes would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.